Back in 2020, I did a year-long no-buy, in a large part to save money to enable me to buy a house. Now, the experience is not one that I would recommend as a permanent lifestyle. However, it was incredibly eye-opening in teaching me a lot about my shopping habits. Fast forward to 2021 and the no-buy had been life-changing as it had permanently altered some of my shopping habits and I'd also been able to purchase my first home in an absolutely crazy market. Today, however, I want to share with you how several years on, by doing no-buy challenges, low buys and making saving a priority in my life has changed my life yet again. So back in late August 2021, I completed on the house that I'm sitting in now. And at the time, there were still quite a few restrictions in place. So I just didn't really feel like going out much. And I was really conscious that I wanted to rebuild my emergency fund. So I actually ended up doing quite a few low buys and in some cases, some unintentional no buys. Now, that was of course really, really helpful in rebuilding that emergency fund because even though I uh, hadn't depleted my bank completely, I chose to keep a small emergency fund back rather than empty my um, account completely, but it was much smaller than I was comfortable with. So I spent several months really prioritizing saving and putting money away in the bank uh, to rebuild those funds. Then in 2022, without boring you with all the details, I found myself unemployed. This was further complicated by the fact that lots of companies within the industry that I've worked in for over a decade also let lots of staff go. So there was lots of very talented people out there and very few opportunities available. After a while, I decided to take a role in another industry, namely retail, but this offered a rather large pay drop. However, I decided to go into it with a really positive mindset. It was four days a week rather than five, and I figured, you know, if I have more time, perhaps I can make social media content more consistently and maybe even bridge the gap between my old salary and my new salary. It was also a less challenging, less stressful role than I'd been in before. So I really bought into a lot of what you kind of hear on YouTube at times that if you earn less money, then you might be less stressed and therefore happier. And after all, isn't happiness what we are all after? So I started that role in December of 2022, and at first it seemed like my positive outlook might have been right. The role was fine, the clientele on the whole were lovely, I, I worked with some of the nicest women that I've ever met, and the role was much less stressful and challenging than my previous roles had been. And you know, even on days when it was super busy, working with some fabulous women made it kind of fun, so lots of positives. But However, despite my best intentions, after a while it became apparent that this just wasn't going to work out the way that I'd hoped. I did make some social media content at first, but unfortunately it was erratic, mainly because I just didn't have the amount of spare time that I'd envisaged. Even though I was working four days instead of five, the hours were long and I didn't get home until after 7 p.m. most days. This was further impacted when there were some major um, roadworks on my route to work. So I would often leave the house at around quarter past nine, 9.30 in the morning, and I wouldn't get home again until 9 p.m. So, and often I was just really tired when I got home. Then I found that that extra day off work that I had was taken up almost entirely by what you might call life admin. So washing clothes, cleaning the house, grocery shopping, etc. And I just, didn't have the time that I thought and it became really apparent that making up the loss in salary in other means just was not realistic or even practical. The salary itself was pretty standard for retail. It wasn't the best, but it certainly wasn't the worst. But as I mentioned before, it did represent quite a drop from what I'd been earning previously. The income was just about covering my basic month to month bills, excluding things like home insurance, car insurance, as I tend to pay for those annually. And I was just about managing so long as I kept my spending to the bare essentials. So no clothing, no nights out, and kind of like an enforced no buy. 
uh, anything that I did need, like clothing for work or uh, home repairs, etc., had to come out of my savings. However, this was constantly being challenged by the cost of living crisis and rising prices. When I first started that job, it was covering all of my bills, but as time went on, I found I was dipping into my savings every single month. Now, you don't have to be a financial expert to understand that having to dip into your savings every month without any way of replenishing them is a recipe for disaster. Also, if I'm being really honest with you, it was a bit of a miserable existence. The reason that my no-buy lasted so long previously was because I could very clearly see the benefits in making all of the sacrifices that I was. I could see that savings pot growing, taking me closer to my goal of purchasing a house. Working long hours and not even being able to afford to go for a meal out with your friends or buy some makeup when it runs out without dipping into savings was miserable. And I also found myself really worried a lot of the time that something might break down at home and I'd have to use my savings to repair it, but then that might leave me with little to no emergency fund with no way to replenish it. And I just found that really, really uncomfortable. As a side note, there are quite a few comments on my original no buy video suggesting that I was glamorizing poverty, which I think are unfair. However, there are a few comments from people saying that they kind of have to live the no buy life all the time, every single month, and they've been living essentially hand to mouth for years. If that's you, I cannot sympathize enough. In truth, I don't think I truly understood how difficult it can be living that way until I'd had this experience. There's kind of this low level anxiety about money all the time that never goes away, and it's it, it's not pleasant, so um, I sympathize completely. Okay, so as you might expect, it became pretty obvious that I needed to look for a new role, probably something in the industry that I'd been employed in before, or at least a very similar role. But I found that applying for new jobs wasn't without difficulty. I would have recruiters try to get in touch with me, but I wasn't available to take their calls. Uh, sometimes I'd be offered an interview, but they were on days that I was rotated onto work, so I'd have to politely decline if rescheduling wasn't an option. Um, also, days in retail are not standard, so you kind of don't get a specific lunch break. So I found kind of scheduling things in around work was really quite challenging. After a while of this struggle, I started to feel pretty trapped. I did persevere though, and I managed to get through multiple rounds of interviews with one particular company. Um, I'd been available on every day that they'd suggested to do an interview, and it was all looking really, really positive. And I didn't have much time to prepare for my final interview as I'd been working for six consecutive days before that, but everything had gone really well in the previous interviews. They'd not been particularly challenging, so I thought I'd do okay. I think you can probably guess how the interview went. Whilst it wasn't disastrous by any means, it certainly wasn't the best I've ever given, in large part because I just hadn't done the necessary research in order to secure the job, because I just didn't have the time. I was asked a couple of questions that I just flat out didn't know the answers to, and afterwards I kicked myself because a few evenings of study and I would have aced those questions. It was at this point I decided to make a rather difficult decision and not one I took lightly, but I decided to take a gamble on myself. I resigned from that job with no job to go to. I knew that for the types of roles I was interested in, I needed to be able to not only be available for interviews, but be able to put in the work and the effort that is required to secure these roles. Often this is hours and hours of research and work without ever knowing if you will secure the role, but it is just what is required in order to do so. I was of course terrified at the prospect of having no income. It is not something that I am comfortable with at all, but I figured if I treated looking for an appropriate job like a job in itself, it's likely that I would be able to secure something without too much time elapsing. And I am absolutely delighted to share that I left my previous role at the beginning of June, and after several rounds of challenging interviews, I received a job offer at the beginning of August for a truly 
brilliant role that I am really excited about, a fantastic opportunity in a specialist field and I start in about a week's time. Which brings me to the point of this story. None of this would have been possible without me prioritising savings, doing no buy challenges, low buys and rebuilding a healthy emergency fund. The prospect of leaving a job by choice and having no income would have been utterly unthinkable without having savings. And whilst it might sound a little bit dramatic, this new role and my new income is absolutely going to change my life. Not least because my boiler has now broken and I will be able to afford to replace it. I've talked about it before here on my channel, but saving money gives you choices. Whether that means you can afford to walk out of a toxic workplace, you're able to weather financial challenges like so many are facing now with increasing interest rates, whether it means that you can take a gamble on yourself like I did and look for a new job, or maybe to be able to seize a, an opportunity when it arises like a business opportunity or a smart investment. The purpose of sharing this personal story with you is not to encourage you to go out tomorrow and quit your job in the hopes that you'll secure a better paid one in a couple of months time. You know, I'm going back into an industry that I had a lot of experience in and truth be told, if I felt that I could have secured that role whilst keeping a income, even though it was smaller, that absolutely would have been the better financial move. I just felt that the time constraints were really, really hampering me. So that is not what I'm encouraging you to do. Rather, I just want to encourage you to make saving part of your overall financial strategy. Even if you can only save a small amount, you know, it's, it kind of seems silly sometimes to save for a rainy day, but you never know when that money is going to come in incredibly useful. I did not plan uh, to find myself unemployed. It was definitely not part of my financial plan, but life throws us curveballs. So it's really good if you can be prepared for that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon. Bye now.